okay quickly and lastly before we get started here's me and if you just zoom out there's me so there should be another video out within the week but if there's not that's why now let's get started go Ben Wallace was born in 1974 in Whitehall, Alabama. He was the 10th born of 11 children and was the youngest of 8 brothers. He was born into a poor family that never had a car and rarely had electricity. To pass the time, Ben Wallace and his older brothers would spend most of their time playing basketball games of 3 on 3 and 4 on 4. With Ben being the youngest and the smallest, the only way he'd ever get the ball was if he rebounded it, stole it, or saved it from going out of bounds. Skills that would turn out to be extremely instrumental later on in his life. Shockingly enough, Ben Wallace is still to this day the smallest of his seven other brothers. Ben would go on to play high school basketball, football, and baseball, and be an all-star in all three. In his spare time, he would cut the neighborhood kid's hair for extra money until he eventually saved up enough money to attend Charles Oakley's basketball camp after his sophomore season, an experience that would change his life forever and help him for the rest of his life. He attended the camp, and Charles Oakley spotted Ben Wallace laughing and joking with his friends, so Oakley challenged him to a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Oakley played extremely rough and tried to bruise up and bully Ben Wallace, but was amazed when Ben played just as rough and didn't let up. Both men left the game a one-on-one -on -one with bloody noses and Ben Wallace had a busted lip too. Ben had been trying to play like Magic Johnson in high school, but Oakley told him if he played the bruising style that he just did, that he would have a real shot at making it to the NBA. He would return with his new style to his junior year of basketball where a countless amount of scouts would come to meet him. But they only wanted him for football and not basketball. This was a problem because Ben's true passion was in basketball. So he turned down all of the scholarships, including one from Auburn. Shortly after, Charles Oakley would enter his life once again, where he found him a spot to play the sport that he wanted for Cuyahoga Community College. I mean, what a big step down. In his first year, he dominated, averaging 24 points, 17 rebounds, and 7 blocks per game, gaining the attention back of all of the scouts that just said they didn't want him for basketball. But that quickly came to an end when he decided to stop going to class after the basketball season ended, so no Division I school would accept his transfer. Charles Oakley stepped in once again saving Ben Wallace by getting him a spot on his old college team, Virginia Union University. It was a Division II school, so it wasn't great, but it was much better than a community college. Ben Wallace was ready to make a huge impression on his new team, but when he realized they already had good scorers on the team, he remembered the advice that Oakley gave him and focused on being a bruising inside center and sticking to that position. It worked because he earned Division II All-American honors and led his team to the D2 Final Four. He finished his final two years at Virginia and then watched the NBA draft for that year come and go without ever a mention of his name because they had no idea who he was since he played for such a small school. Ben was devastated and knew he missed his opportunity, but he wasn't ready to give up because basketball was all he knew. He eventually made it onto the Boston Celtics Summer League team where head coach at the time, ML Carr, told Ben Wallace, who now had a fully developed body at the time, that he wasn't big enough to play power forward, so instead he played him at shooting guard. Without surprise, he quickly failed and was cut from the team. But he was more determined than ever now and vowed to prove Coach Carr wrong. Ben decided to play overseas, where he was quickly spotted by the then Washington Bullets GM, Wes Unseld, who was also an undersized big man. Wes signed Ben and finally gave him the chance that he'd been waiting for. The Wizards loved him because of how much Chris Webber said he was killing him in practice. They loved him, but they weren't committed because he was traded to the Orlando Magic and then shortly after traded to the Detroit Pistons for Grant Hill, where at the time, many people believed it was a very lopsided trade. But once again, Ben Wallace vowed to prove them wrong. Ben had finally felt success when the Pistons president made Wallace their centerpiece to build around and gave him a six year, $42 million contract. And with this new contract, he would repay his mother and buy her a new house. The Pistons now played small, but made up for it with their bruising style of defense. Ben would start to show his worth because in 2001 and two, he'd lead the league in rebounds and blocks, all while playing the power forward position making him the first and only man to ever do this at power forward. The only three players in history to lead the league in both rebounds and blocks for a season were centers, Bill Walton, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So this is no easy accomplishment, especially when you're six foot seven. Along with this, he was named the unanimous defensive player of the year for the season, 
which is a crazy amount of efficient play even though he only averaged 7 points a game. After the addition of Chauncey Billups the next season, Ben Wallace was now playing the best of his career when he led the league with 15 rebounds and averaged 3.1 blocks per game, missing out leading the league in them again and in both stats by 0.1 block. But it was okay because he won the Defensive Player of the Year award once again. So he had an amazing season on the court, but off the court his mother passed away after collapsing in a grocery store. One year later, the Detroit Pistons would infamously pass on Carmelo Anthony and draft Darko Milicic second overall. But they would recruit Larry Brown as their head coach, which was a great choice because this newly assembled team would lead the Detroit Pistons to the 2004 NBA Finals, where the Lakers were heavily favored to win. Ben Wallace had to once again prove people wrong, and he did when he led his team to win the NBA championship, and he'd also win Finals MVP. Proving all the schools that turned him down wrong, proving his old Boston Celtics Summer League coach wrong, and proving all of the Detroit Pistons critics wrong. He also won the Defensive Player Award for that season and the next season, making him the only four-time consecutive Defensive Player Award winner. This four-year run was the best of Ben Wallace's career and was achieved by defying all odds and proving everyone wrong along the way that doubted him. He bounced around several teams for the next few years before returning and eventually retiring with the Detroit Pistons. Ben Wallace has said that he'll be forever grateful to the Pistons for giving him a chance and that Detroit is his real home. Since his retirement, on July 15, 2016, the man who would eventually become a defensive player himself, Draymond Green, wrote a letter thanking and crediting Ben Wallace for being his inspiration to make his way into the league as an undersized big man. Draymond also said how grateful he was for Ben Wallace, acting as an older brother to him since he made it into the league. One day later, Ben Wallace's number 3 jersey was retired by the Detroit Pistons. Ben showed how hard work, dedication, a never give up attitude, and proving all of his doubters wrong had made him his way into the NBA and at the same time inspired kids across the world.